I chose this life. And someday, it's going to get me killed. But not today. Ice baths, gun Fu and James McAvoy dressed like Tyler Durden, Atomic Blonde felt like an hour and 55 minutes of Charlize Theron hitting Eastern European henchmen with whatever she could grab while she was being choked. Usually it was a small household appliance, but sometimes she could find a hose. Before we get into the finer points of improvised weaponry, be sure to subscribe to Universe if you like movies, because we hit movies with lamps. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Buddy Hutton if you uh, want to tell me that you disagree with my attempts at humor in this intro. <laughs> Charlize Theron stars as Lorraine Broughton, an MI6 agent who smokes so many cigarettes on screen I was actually concerned for her character's cancer health. She's as cool as a fictitious character can be. In addition to the literal ice baths that she takes that I mentioned previously, she burns pictures of her dead lovers, is always ready to kill people, and drinks like 20 Stoli on the rocks during the course of the film. She's sent to Germany to investigate the death of another MI6 agent who happened to be her former lover and to find a list of double agents, which is just a watch MacGuffin that everybody chases around the whole film. Opposite her is James McAvoy's David Percival, another MI6 agent who is just a hot mess. He wears a knitted vest in one scene. Hot mess. Let's move on. Set in 1989 Berlin, the film uses the two vastly different sides of the city as set pieces. The characters jump between the stark gray of the socialist Eastern Berlin to the modern organic shapes of Western Berlin at such a frenzy, at times you have to check the architecture behind the action to understand where the scene is actually taking place. The film is based on a novel by Anthony Johnson and Sam Hart called The Coldest City. While the story remains almost the same as the graphic novel, the script added a few more more twists and switched out some of the more expository dialogue for extended periods of Charlize Theron kicking people's asses. Lorraine is made way more badass than the original with more vodka, more ice baths, and more hand-to-hand -hand ass kicking. Sophia Boutea's character, Delphine LaSalle, was originally a guy named Pierre LaSalle in the book, but I really liked that they switched her character out. I agree with the artistic choices that were made. I agree with them so much. Can we run that again? Additionally, McAvoy's character David Percival made consistent sexist remarks about his female counterpart throughout the novelization. These were removed from the film, but he was still a dick, just not an overtly sexist dick. God, I think I love you. The art direction in this film is awesome. Charlize Theron's hotel room in this is the most 80s thing I've ever seen. It has a circle bed with teal and pink neon lights. The fight choreography was fantastic, and knowing Charlize did her own stunts made it way more enjoyable for some reason. I like that she was actually the one kicking dudes downstairs. Like so many movies made from graphic art source material, Atomic Blonde uses its comic book novel counterpart as an apparent storyboard. Some of the scenes are a direct transfer from the black and white book. The soundtrack, though, was my favorite thing about the film. It included Cat People by David Bowie, Hungry Like the Wolf by Duran Duran, Under Pressure by Queen, and two versions of both 99 Luff Balloons and Blue Monday. My favorite scene, though, was Charlize taking a bunch of, like, calming breaths in an elevator while she was on her way up to kill would-be assassins. She's, like, just zen breathing. <sighs> It's a bit difficult to track who is on which side of the fight. Everyone has accents, people are kind of familiar, but their stories are a bit hazy, and none of the characters besides Lorraine and Percival are explored at all, but even their story arcs, if they actually have story arcs, aren't really that clear. You leave the theater not understanding the lead character's motivations, and without that it just feels like people are getting into these passionate fights, but they seem a bit humdrum because you don't have any emotional tie to anyone, so Charlize is just kicking people off balconies and tying dudes up with hoses, and you're like, yeah, but why? Sophia Batea's character is never fully explained at all. She's said to be really naive, but you don't get enough into her to care. Overall, Atomic Blonde was a spy film with action elements so good they kind of make up for the bad spy elements. If you want to read our written review, click the link in the description below to go over to GameSpot.com. Please let me know in the comments what you think of Soviet-era architecture, because that's what I want to talk about right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Thanks for letting me be weird. <laughs>